title, Echoes of the Unseen. In the heart of a bustling city, nestled between modern high-rises and forgotten, shadowed alleyways, stood the Montrose Hotel, a relic of the past. Its grandeur was now faded, its walls echoing tales few dared to recount. It was here, amidst whispers of the unknown, that Alex found his first job, eager to start anew, oblivious to the hotel's ominous past. The Montrose, once a beacon of luxury, had long been the subject of rumors' disappearances, unexplained phenomena, and guests who checked in but never left. These tales were dismissed by the hotel management as mere urban legends, stories to scare off the competition. But beneath the veneer of skepticism, unease lingered among the staff. A silent acknowledgement of truths too frightening to face. Alex's first day was marked by an unsettling calm. The hotel, despite its size, seemed eerily devoid of life. The lobby, with its towering ceilings and grand staircase, was shrouded in a persistent, unnatural chill. His training was brief, conducted by a manager whose smile never quite reached her eyes, as if distracted by a distant concern. As night descended, the true nature of the Montrose began to unveil itself. Alex was assigned the night shift, tasked with attending to the needs of any late arrivals. The hours ticked by in silence, the quiet punctuated only by the occasional creak of aging wood or the distant echo of footsteps where there should be none. It was during a routine check of the guest floors that Alex first heard it, a faint whisper, barely audible, calling out from the depths of the hotel. Intrigued and unnerved, he followed the sound, each step taking him further from the safety of the well-lit lobby and deeper into the Montrose's shadowy heart. The whispers led him to room 413. The door, aged and warped, stood slightly ajar, inviting him into the darkness beyond. Inside, the air was thick with an unplaceable sense of dread. The room was untouched by time, preserved as if waiting for a guest who never arrived. And then, the whispers ceased, replaced by a silence so profound, it seemed to swallow the very essence of sound. As Alex stood there, caught in the grip of the room's oppressive atmosphere, he realized he was not alone. The air shifted, charged with an electric anticipation, and the shadows began to move. Shapes, indistinct and fluid, coalesced in the corners of his vision, never fully revealing themselves, yet undeniably present. Frozen by fear, Alex could only watch as the shadows whispered promises of secrets hidden within the walls of the Montrose. Tales of those who had vanished, swallowed by the hotel's insatiable appetite for the living. The room felt alive, breathing and watching, its intentions unclear. The sound of a door slamming shut in the distance broke the spell, snapping Alex back to reality. He fled room 413, the whispers chasing him down the hallways. Always just a breath away, he emerged into the lobby, gasping for air. The darkness of the upper floors seemingly reluctant to release him. In the days that followed, Alex's encounter in room 413 became a distant, unsettling memory one he dared not explore further, but the Montrose had marked him, its secrets now part of his own story. The whispers didn't cease. They merely waited, biding their time until they could be heard again. The truth
true horror of the Montrose Hotel lay not in its past, but in its future, in the stories yet to unfold within its walls. Alex's first day had ended, but his journey into the unknown had only just begun. The Montrose, with its endless corridors and hidden rooms, held many more tales, each waiting for the right moment, the right person, to emerge from the shadows. And so, the hotel stood, a sentinel at the edge of reality, its secrets preserved in the whispers of the unseen, a reminder that some doors, once opened, can never be closed again. Continuing from where the eerie encounters in the Montrose Hotel left off, Alex found himself increasingly ensnared in the hotel's labyrinthine mysteries. Despite his initial resolve to dismiss his experiences as products of an overactive imagination, the events of his first night, the whispers, the shifting shadows, the palpable sense of dread, refused to be relegated to mere memory. Instead, they lingered at the edge of his consciousness, a constant, unnerving presence as he navigated his daily responsibilities. The weeks that followed were punctuated by oddities that seemed to defy rational explanation. Guests spoke in hushed tones of fleeting glimpses of figures in the corridors, figures that vanished when approached, the air sometimes filled with the faint scent of lilac, a perfume favored by the hotel's long-deceased original owner. Lights flickered without cause, doors locked and unlocked themselves. The staff, Alex noticed, had developed a habit of avoiding certain areas of the hotel, crossing themselves as they hurried past closed doors behind which it was rumored the past still lingered. Driven by a mix of fear and fascination, Alex began to explore the hotel during his off hours, drawn to uncover its secrets. His explorations revealed hidden rooms and forgotten passageways, each discovery peeling back another layer of the Montrose's storied past. It was in one such hidden room buried beneath layers of dust and decay, that Alex found the journal. The leather-bound volume, its pages yellowed with age, belonged to Eleanor Montrose, the wife of the hotel's founder. In it, Eleanor spoke of her growing unease with the hotel, a monumental edifice to ambition that had consumed her husband's soul. She wrote of strange rites and darker truths, of a pact made in the shadow of greed that had cursed the Montrose and all who dwelled within its walls. As Alex turned the pages, the whispers returned, now clearer, more insistent. They spoke not to him, but of him, weaving his presence into the fabric of the hotel's tormented legacy. The air grew cold, the darkness deepened, and Alex realized that he was not alone. A figure stood in the doorway, a silhouette barely distinguishable from the shadows, its features obscured, its intentions unknown. The figure spoke, its voice a melange of echoes, as if drawn from the depths of the hotel itself. It spoke of the Montrose as a keeper of balances, threshold between worlds, where the debts of the past were paid in the currency of souls. Alex, it claimed, had been chosen, drawn to the Montrose by forces beyond his understanding, to play a role in a story far older and darker than he could imagine. The figure vanished as suddenly as it had appeared, leaving Alex in the silence of the hidden room. The journal, 
of Eleanor Montrose, clutched in his trembling hands. The whispers faded, but their message lingered. Alex's encounter in room 413, though deeply unsettling, marked the beginning of an inexplicable fascination with the Montrose Hotel's shadowy corridors and whispered secrets. The experience, rather than deterring him, ignited a quest for understanding, a desire to peel back the layers of silence that shrouded the hotel's history. In the weeks that followed, Alex found himself delving deeper into the Montrose's past, each discovery more disturbing than the last. Employees spoke in hushed tones of rooms that were never rented out, of guests who whispered of strange happenings in the night, only to disappear without a trace by morning. The more he learned, the more the hotel seemed like a puzzle its pieces scattered and hidden, each holding a fragment of the truth. One night, driven by an unshakable sense of purpose, Alex ventured beyond the guest floors to the parts of the hotel long abandoned. The basement, a labyrinth of neglected storage rooms and dimly lit corridors, held the promise of answers. It was here among the relics of the Montrose's illustrious past, that Alex stumbled upon an old, dust-covered ledger. The pages, yellowed with age, listed names and dates, reservations that corresponded with the disappearances rumored among the staff. But more chilling than the names were the notes scribbled in the margins. Cryptic references to a room not listed on any hotel blueprint room zero, its existence denied by management, but spoken of in fearful whispers by the staff. Armed with this new knowledge, Alex sought out room zero, its location a mystery that seemed to defy the logic of the hotel's architecture. Night after night, he explored, driven by a compulsion he couldn't explain. It was as if the hotel itself was guiding him, leading him closer to its darkest secret. Then, on a night shrouded in fog, when the boundary between the world of the living and that of the shadows seemed at its thinnest, Alex found it, a door hidden away in the basement, its number zero barely visible under layers of dust and grime. As he reached for the handle, the air grew cold, the silence of the hotel deepening until all he could hear was his own heartbeat, thunderous in his ears. The door opened with a creak, revealing a room that should not exist, a room out of time, untouched by the decades, its furnishings covered in sheets, the air thick with the scent of decay. And there, in the center of the room, stood a mirror, its surface clouded, yet somehow alive with a light that seemed to come from within. Drawn to the mirror, Alex approached, each step heavy with dread. As he stood before it, the surface cleared, revealing not his own reflection, scenes of the Montrose's past images of guests who had vanished, their faces twisted in fear, their 
pleas for help echoing across the years. The mirror was a window to the hotel's soul, a keeper of its secrets. And as Alex watched, transfixed, he realized that the Montrose was not just a building, but an entity, alive with the memories of those it had claimed. But before he could turn away, the images shifted, offering him a glimpse of the future, of horrors yet to come, horrors in which he played a part. As the mirror's light grew brighter, blinding, Alex felt himself being pulled into its depths, the line between observer and participant blurring. He was part of the Montrose now, his story woven into the fabric of its history, a history that was far from over. The door to room zero closed behind him, the echo of its latch, a final, chilling note in the symphony of whispers that filled the hotel. Outside, the world moved on, unaware of the secrets hidden within the Montrose Hotel. Secrets that called out to those who listened, promising more tales of the unseen, tales waiting in the shadows to be continued. As the door to room zero clicked shut, sealing Alex within its enigmatic grasp, the world outside continued its indifferent march, oblivious to the thin veil that separated it from the unspeakable realities within the Montrose Hotel. Within this hidden chamber, time seemed to stand still, the air pulsating with the echoes of a thousand lost souls. The mirror, now quiet, its surface a dormant pool of darkness, appeared to be waiting, biding its time until it chose to reveal its secrets once more. Alex, caught in the grip of an unseen force, found himself unable to move away, his reflection lost in the void that stared back at him. Days turned to nights and back again, the passage of time marked only by the subtle shifts in the darkness that filled room zero hotel above carried on, its staff and guests unaware of the unfolding drama in its shadowy heart, but whispers began to spread, tales of Alex's disappearance, the latest in a long line of mysteries that clung to the Montrose like a shroud. Meanwhile, in the world beyond the hotel's imposing walls, Alex's absence had not gone unnoticed. A friend, driven by concern and an unshakable feeling of dread, began to search for answers. This friend, Sarah, had known Alex for years, their bond forged in the fires of shared adversity. She knew him to be curious, but also cautious, and his sudden vanishing act was out of character. Sarah's quest led her to the Montrose a place she'd heard of only in passing, its reputation a collage of rumor and innuendo. She approached the hotel with a mixture of determination and apprehension, the stories of its haunted past weighing heavily on her mind. Her inquiries at the front desk were met with evasive responses, the staff's nervous glances and hushed tones only serving to deepen her concern. It was clear that Alex's fate was entwined with the hotel's dark secrets, secrets that were closely guarded by those who walked its halls. Undeterred, Sarah began her own investigation, each step taking her deeper into the labyrinthine corridors of the Montrose. She felt watched, the weight of unseen eyes upon her, pressed on, driven by a resolve to uncover the truth. It was during one such foray into the hotel's dimly lit underbelly that Sarah stumbled upon a door unlike any other. Its frame was old, the number zero 
barely visible beneath the layers of dust and neglect. Intuition, a silent whisper in the back of her mind, told her that this was the place, the nexus of the hotel's mysteries, the door through which Alex had disappeared. As she reached out, the air around her grew cold, a palpable sense of dread enveloping her. The door creaked open at her touch, revealing the shadowed interior of Room Zero, a room that pulsed with an otherworldly energy. Inside, the mirror stood as Alex had left it, its surface a gateway to realms beyond comprehension. Sarah, standing on the threshold, felt a pull, a compulsion to step forward peer into the depths that had claimed her friend. The room behind her faded, the sounds of the hotel dissipating into silence as she was drawn into the mirror's embrace. The line between reality and nightmare blurred, the mirror's surface rippling like water disturbed by a breeze. What Sarah saw in that moment, the visions that unfolded before her, tapestry of past, present, and future, a tangled narrative of the Montrose and those who had crossed its threshold. But among these images, one stood out a glimpse of Alex, not lost, but transformed, a part of the hotel's very essence, his fate inextricably linked to its own. The story of the Montrose of Alex and now Sarah was far from over. The mirror, silent once more, held within it the promise of revelations yet to come, of truths hidden in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to emerge. As the darkness of Room Zero enveloped her, Sarah realized that her journey into the heart of the Montrose was only beginning a new chapter in a tale that defied understanding, a tale that whispered of the unseen, reaching out from the depths to be continued. In the heart of the Montrose Hotel's enigma, Alex found himself trapped within the confines of Room Zero, the boundary between his reality and the spectral tableau reflected in the mirror beginning to dissolve, the scenes of anguish and terror that played before him were not just echoes of the past, but portents of a future inexorably linked to the hotel's dark essence. With each passing moment, the distinction between observer and participant blurred further. Alex's reflection, once a familiar anchor in the swirling chaos, was now absent, replaced by the myriad faces of those who had disappeared within these walls. The realization dawned on him. The Montrose did not merely hold its victims in a physical sense, captured their very essence, feeding on their fears, their stories becoming part of its own grotesque narrative. As the light from the mirror intensified, piercing the gloom of Room Zero, Alex felt an invisible force pulling him closer, the 
air around him thickened, charged with the whispered regrets of lost souls. It was then, in his most desperate moment, that he understood. The Montrose was not merely a predator, but a guardian of a threshold, a gatekeeper to realms beyond human comprehension, determined to escape. Yet driven by a need to uncover the truth, Alex searched the room for any clue, any key that might release him from this nightmare. His efforts led him to the discovery of an ancient tome, hidden away in a forgotten corner of the room, its pages filled with arcane symbols and rituals, the secrets of the hotel laid bare in cryptic texts. Among the rituals, one stood out a ceremony of binding and release, a possible means to sever the connection between the hotel and the energies it harnessed. But the ritual required a sacrifice, a willing soul to take the place of those seeking freedom. The weight of this choice bore down on Alex. The temptation of escape balanced against the cost of another's damnation. As he pondered this grim decision, the mirror began to change once more, the light dimming to reveal a new scene, a future not yet written, a path that lay open to him, should he dare to take it. In this vision, Alex saw himself, not as a prisoner of the Montrose, but as its master, a keeper of secrets with the power to shape its destiny. The offer was seductive, a chance to wield the hotel's ancient power, to navigate the shadowy realms it touched. Yet, in this promise of power, there lay a darker truth, a warning that the cost of such knowledge was a descent into madness, a loss of self so complete that all that remained was the echo of a soul consumed by the Montrose. Torn between the desire for escape and the allure of the unknown, Alex stood at the threshold of decision. The fate of the Montrose and its secrets hanging in the balance. The hotel, alive with anticipation, awaited his choice its corridors and rooms holding their breath. The whispers quieted for the first time in centuries. And so the story pauses, the next chapter unwritten, the destiny of Alex and the Montrose Hotel suspended in a moment of uncertainty. The shadows linger, patient and eternal, their secrets veiled in darkness ready to envelop those who dare to seek them out. The tale of the Montrose is far from over, its mysteries deepening, waiting for the moment to unfold once more. In the heart of the Montrose Hotel's enigma, Room Zero became Alex's crucible, the mirror, once a window to the past and a grim forecast of the future, now reflected back an abyss that threatened consume him, the hotel's whispered secrets, its hidden pains, and unseen horrors, all converged within this room, pulsating with a life force fed by lost souls and untold stories. As the mirror's glow intensified, enveloping Alex in a light as cold as the void, a realization dawned upon him, a realization that the Montrose was not merely a predator, but a prison, ensnaring both the innocent and the damned. Its walls, saturated with the echoes of a thousand silent screams, yearned for release, for an end to the cycle of despair that fueled its existence every fiber of his being urging him to flee, to escape the fate that had claimed so many before him. Alex understood 
that leaving was no longer an option. He was intrinsically linked to the Montrose's destiny, a key to the salvation or damnation of the souls ensnared within its grasp. The mirror, he sensed, was the conduit a bridge between realms, offering a chance not just to witness, but to alter the very fabric of the hotel's morose tapestry. Summoning courage from the depths of his terror, Alex reached out, his fingers brushing against the cold, smooth surface of the mirror. The contact was electric, a surge of energy coursing through him, a torrent of voices whispering his name, pleading for release, for peace. In that moment, Alex made his choice. With a defiant cry, he shattered the mirror, fragments of glass raining down like tears, each piece reflecting not the horrors of the past, but the possibility of redemption, the light extinguished, the whispers silenced, and the hotel trembled, its foundations quaking as if in the throes of a long-awaited liberation. When the dust settled, Alex found himself alone in the darkness of room zero, the door ajar, beckoning him back to the world he had left behind. Stepping into the corridor, he noticed a change, a lifting of the oppressive atmosphere, a clarity to the air that had not existed before. The Montrose, though still standing, felt different, as if a weight had been lifted from its aged shoulders. In the days that followed, the Montrose Hotel underwent a transformation. Guests reported a sense of peace, a warmth that had long been absent. The staff whispered among themselves, wondering at the change, yet grateful for the absence of the shadows that had once haunted their steps. Alex, having confronted the heart of the Montrose's darkness, chose to remain within its walls, a guardian of the secrets he had uncovered. But the hotel, now freed from the cycle of sorrow that had defined its existence, began to fade from the realm of nightmares. Its story, a cautionary tale of the power of belief, the strength of the human spirit, and the thin veil that separates our world from the unseen. As for the mirror, its fragments were never found. Its whereabouts, a mystery that Alex kept to himself. Some say it was destroyed, its power broken with its physical form. Others believe it lies hidden, a dormant relic waiting for the moment when its purpose will once again be called upon. The Montrose Hotel stands to this day a testament to the enduring nature of hope and the unbreakable bond between the past and the future. Its doors are open to all who seek its shelter. But beneath the surface, the story of Alex and the mirror remains, a reminder that some mysteries are not meant to be solved, but to be experienced. Their lessons woven into the fabric of our existence forever part of the tapestry of life. And so, the Montrose's legacy endures, a beacon in the darkness, its light shining brighter with each soul it touches, a symbol of the eternal struggle between darkness and light, despair and hope, death and rebirth. The story of the Montrose and its inhabitants both seen and unseen, continues a never-ending tale of the human condition, echoing through time, a whisper in the night that will never be silenced.